Good Friday morning. Holy sarcasm. Is that a thing? Sometimes conditions warrant the use of irony, maybe a tad of sarcasm if you will, to bring to light inappropriate behavior or beliefs. There's a, a dear woman in our church who is gentle and loving, one of the most timid women I know. But when she sees stupid behavior, she can with one word put on the most confident face and with just the right amount of sarcasm say, really? In this chapter, Paul is the master of sarcasm. What Paul states here is more or less what the Corinthians believed. See, in their minds, they had far transcended their early master. They were now so wise that in comparison, he was the town idiot. They were strong, he was weak. They were crowned with honor and dignity, he was despicable. Clearly, they were in paradise. The paradise of fools. Holy sarcasm. I do believe there is such a thing. Uh, the same is true for anger. There is holy anger. Jesus demonstrated that. Just don't get carried away with your sharp retorts and think every biting word you ever speak pleases God. Sarcasm and anger, they're like salt and pepper on a delicious steak. A little bit. Just a little bit. Every mistake that friends and family make does not call for a caustic retort from you. Sarcasm, it's a dangerous weapon. It needs to be used rarely and carefully. There are several places in the scripture where holy men of God use sarcasm, just like Paul did here, but you won't find a lot of examples. Perhaps the most obvious one is uh, Elijah's words on Mount Carmel in that battle he had with the 400 prophets of Baal. In 1 Kings, Elijah said, Hey, cry aloud to Baal. He's a god. Maybe he's deep in thought. Maybe he's going potty. Or maybe he's on a journey. Maybe he's asleep. Wake him up. Ooh, pretty biting. Pretty caustic. Heavy sarcasm. But let's remember that in Elijah's example, this sarcasm was directed at false prophets, his enemies, if you will. It was a pretty ugly situation. But Paul, in our passage today, he was writing to his children in the faith. And yeah, his sarcasm was going to sting a bit, but it really did come from a place of love and, and with a sincere desire to help them. When you use sarcasm to make someone look ridiculous, you're using it wrong. It's not holy. If, if what you feel when you're using sarcasm is bitterness or resentment, that's, that's not holy. Paul wanted nothing more than to help the Corinthians, and, and he had no pleasure in causing them pain. As Paul moves through this sarcastic speech in these eight verses, notice how his tone really is not caustic. It's actually compassionate. Here's Pastor Pat's paraphrase of 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 8 through 16. Well, you got the world by the tail on a downhill pull. Two years of serving Jesus, and now you're the master, and I'm the town idiot? Really? Come on, guys. You know me. I've worked tirelessly to help you to grow in your faith. Every time I've been criticized, I haven't fought fire with fire. I've even blessed those who've belittled me. You know what I've had to endure, the slanderous way that I've been treated. Folks, I'm not trying to shame you. We're family. I love you. And I do want what's best for you. But all this divisive opinions that are running through the church, you know that that is not in any way helpful. You know how much I love you, and I want what's best for you. I am not expecting anything from you that I do not expect from myself. I promise you that you're never going to hear me say, do as I say, not as I do. Wow. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the things that are stored up in my heart, may they please you and be acceptable to you. 
God, help me not to be mean. And if ever you call on me to sarcastically speak in holiness, help me to do it with a wink of the eye and a smile on my face in a way that will assure the person I'm speaking to that I love them. I don't know if this helps you. It helps me. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.